I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. So we've covered a lot in our series already on deployment, management, how to do user profiles, and today we want to talk through some of the things around the user's experience. So here's the Azure portal, and within the portal, we stood up two systems to be our session hosts, and they were Server 2016, based off of a custom image that I had with preloaded applications. And we showed you the remote desktop web client, but we didn't really interact with it a whole lot because we also took a look at the remote desktop client application. As you can see here, I've added a new tenant group and we'll get to that in a second. But just to recap, these are the applications that were installed on my session hosts and I pre-installed them as part of my custom image and then I presented them to my session as start menu items. So if you missed any of that stuff, I suggest you go back to our first video in the series and watch that so you're familiar with the deployments. But today we wanna to focus more on the user experience. So one of the first things in the user experience, we have ability to have different tenants, different hosts grouped within those tenants, and then different app groups. Now, what you're looking at here is an example of a remote applications group, or remote app for short, and also a desktop app group. So if I were to go back to the web client, and here I'm logged in with the account Superman, and then I try to access any one of these applications, they'll open under the identity of Superman. But here in the remote desktop application, I'm logged in as the user Gamora, and so anything that I open here opens under that instance as well. But before we go on, since we're talking about the user experience here, it may be helpful for you to understand how users will be able to connect into this environment and what kind of security we're actually looking at here. So of course what we have first is a user who wants to connect and they have an identity in Azure Active Directory. When they go to authenticate, we're going to check their authentication through conditional access, MFA, or whatever else is going on in their profile. Once they have been authenticated, we will then generate a authorization token. And this OAuth token will be passed to the user. And once the user has that token, it's going to be passed to the web access front end of Windows Virtual Desktop. Once the token is passed there, then we're going to analyze their access policy, and that's going to dictate what applications they have access to. Once that's complete, we'll pass the token off to the gateway, which is going to convert that token into a certificate. Once that happens, the gateway will ask the session hosts to make a outbound connection to the gateway, and then that certificate it will be passed back to the user and then we will complete the session by the gateway then making the outbound connection to the user so there is no inbound connectivity into this environment at all so it ends up being highly secure because of that so let's run one of these applications so you can see the user experience here we'll open calculator because that's fast and we'll allow this connection and it brings up a launcher where it's going to ask us for our credentials and then we hit submit so now it's talking to the gateway and the gateway then is making a request to the session host and saying session host, please make an outbound connection. And there we have the calculator app, right? And then of course we can interact with this as much as we want. Okay, and if I go back to all resources here, we can see the calculator app is still loaded. So let's launch 7-Zip. And you can see that opens much faster and that was real time. And this is because I'm already logged into the session. Now it's just a matter of launching the app. So now you're at the behest of how long it takes that app to open. So for example, if I run VS Code, you can see VS Code takes a lot longer to open. And again, this, these uh, VMs that I have running the session hosts are not very powerful here. Okay, that opened, and that took quite a while. That was probably almost a, a minute for it to open. So if I try to create like a new file here, there we go, we say this is a file, and then we do file, and we do save as. Then now we have the normal user experience here. So let's save this as test file, that's plain text. Okay, and now we'll close that. Let's go back to our all resources here, and let's try something else that's fast like putty. There you go. And uh, paint.net's a little bit slower than putty, but that still opened relatively quickly. So again, just sample applications for us to load here. So now I've got a couple of these apps that are now running and I'm installed and running as Superman. And now while I'm doing that, let me also go to a virtual desktop experience. All right, so now we're logged on to that session host. And if I right click on the taskbar and open the task manager, we go to users, we see, hey, look at that. I've got a disconnected session from Gamora on there. Well, that's interesting. All right, now we're gonna start our virtual desktop session from here. So 
there we go. And that was in real time as well. So now if I look at the task manager here under users, you can see that Gamora is logged in and so is Superman. How can the world survive the DC and Marvel Universe coming together? And this is Windows 10 multi-user. So now we're logged in with multiple users on the same Windows 10 instance at the same time. Also still logged on to the other session host managing all of our other applications. So let's take this another step and talk about a mobile device experience. So let's go back to the documentation page. And from here, I'm gonna send you to another address and we'll put this in the description as well. And this is what's new for the remote desktop client on iOS. And we have clients for iOS, for Mac, for Android, for Windows. And you can download this, install and use Windows Virtual Desktop from your phone. And we've added support for uh, Swift Tech Mice and so other devices are coming, pretty cool. So in order to get started with this, this. We go to get started here and this is where you can get the uh, proper tools to get you going and we have a instructions link here so if you follow this you have to download this app and this is called test flight on iOS so you download this follow the email links and and etc uh, going through this process and once we have that in place then we're going to follow this section to add a remote desktop connection so let's do this let me pull up my phone so I'll go to the app store and I'll download the test Test flight app and that's pretty quick just a couple seconds and I've already registered for this so when I open test flight I can see remote desktop beta is already here so I can hit install on that and just here either hit open or back to our desktop screen here we can hit open on the RDS client okay, and now we need to add a feed so that's under feeds here and we hit the plus button and now we need the URL for the feed Okay, so we'll use rdweb.wmb.microsoft.com and now we authenticate. I'll sign in as Superman. And we have authenticated and signed in. So now since I'm in here as Superman, if I run something like, let's say, calculator. All right, and we are logged in right away. And you can see that we're looking right at what we left open, which was VS Code. And so I can open my little keyboard here. Okay, now right now I'm in control of the mouse, as you can see. We can also just go to a touch-based interface, or I can go back to the mouse. And of course there's support now for uh, mouse-based devices. And uh, there's the full list of what's available for that in the documentation. One of the other things that we can do is we could save our creds by clicking on the ellipse in the top corner and going to edit. And then we can go to our user account and we can create ourselves a login like I already have for Superman. Then we can open up something like our desktop session and it picks up our creds. And now we've logged in to our remote desktop session on our phone. And you can see the same user profile is here that we saw earlier for Superman. So we can go back to the home screen and then open our application again. And we're right back where we were for our apps and we got to jump back over to our desktop. And now we're on our desktop. So we could have it either way or both at the same time. All right, and that is the iOS beta experience. And uh, I'm sure that the other platforms like Android or Mac have a similar experience. If not, I think they are planned and in the works and you can find all that detail on our documentation. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the user experience for Windows Virtual Desktop. Lots of different options that you can choose from. And I'm sure that more will be coming as we enable user experiences moving forward towards general availability. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the like button and give us some comments below about what you're interested in and what user experiences you would like to see enabled going forward. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can see our videos when they come out, which is roughly once a week. And thanks a lot for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Happy learning.